Hello. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Alira, and I've been with the Smith family for my entire schooling life, uh, first as a Learning for Life scholar and now as a tertiary scholarship recipient. So my story is not dissimilar from the thousands of other children in this country like me. I grew up in a low socioeconomic coal mining town in regional Victoria. I grew up with my single mother who suffered from various health issues. And my experience growing up was one of financial instability and poverty. It was the uncertainty of the next meal and the little things like hand-me-down uniforms. Naturally, these circumstances set me behind many of my peers. There are privileges that I've never been allowed. We are all limited by the education we can afford and I was limited by the deprivation of my hometown and by the inherent but weighty responsibilities that come with being a child in poverty. It's often a feeling like I've started the race of life 100 metres behind everyone else. The Smith family, however, is exactly what allowed me to stay in the race. For my entire schooling life, I've been a recipient of the Learning for Life Scholarship, which provided my mum with funding to buy school essentials and provided me personally with a whole new network of support. Both of my siblings, my older sister and younger brother, were also Learning for Life recipients. My sister, who's now finishing her master's degree, and my younger brother, who is starting high school next year, would not be where we are or who we are today without the Smith family. One of my fondest memories of the Smith family is exchanging letters with my sponsors as part of the Learning for Life program. It was like having a pen pal, and it was nice to know that this person who I'd never truly met actually cared about my education. One experience will always stick out to me. For context, I've always loved art. Bit of a spoiler here, but I'm studying to be a graphic designer, and sometimes I even manage to make a little extra money selling my work on the side. I remember exchanging letters with a sponsor who shared this passion. She loved visual art. She loved it in a way that I didn't even know people were allowed to love art. Um, as supportive as my mum is, she never really got it and any sort of creativity was never seen as a real career path by people at my school. So my sponsor would send me photos of this environmental art that she'd see around Australia. Impressionist banksias, landscapes full of galahs and kangaroos, big sculptural things on the sides of highways, and like these abstract works that I could never really understand but thought looked very cool. And once she sent me a photo of her dog. I think it was a border collie or some kind of other farm dog. And in return, I sent a photo of my art. And the support that I received in return from this complete stranger was electrifying for a young kid like me. By the time I got to the end of high school, support from the Smith family was the difference between being able to afford my VC supplies and not. This meant that I was able to graduate with an ATAR that guaranteed me a spot at the University of Melbourne, as well as a perfect study school in VC biology. I don't need to tell you that without textbooks, which we wouldn't have been able to afford alone, this couldn't have happened. I now proudly speak to you as a Bachelor of Design student who managed to receive high distinctions in my first semester of study, and still the Smith family's support is making a world of difference. It's meant being able to afford the expensive 3D modelling software I need for my degree, and it's given me the opportunity to move to Melbourne rather than have to commute on the train four hours every day. And it's more than financial, it always has been. I mentioned the letters from my sponsors, but there was also the career mentoring I did in 2020. My mentor encouraged me to pursue a university education despite the obvious and sometimes intimidating barriers. They helped me not only foster my ambition to go to university at Melbourne, but hold on to it, even when the world was telling me that that wasn't possible. And now I'm here, and I'm achieving that ambition. But the effects of growing up in poverty don't just disappear over one day, especially at somewhere like the University of Melbourne. So many of my peers are going to enter the working world with skills that I just never got to learn and connections that I'll never have. This year, I'll be undertaking a cadetship supported by the Smith family, which will guarantee me a paid placement in a workplace that will not only help fill in these gaps that I've missed, but make sure that I don't fall further behind my peers while they undertake unpaid internships that I can't afford to do. It's often easy to forget just how much unpaid work is a privilege, and if the choice is between working all summer to afford my uni fees or working for eight weeks for free to pad out my resume, well, the choice is already made for students like me. 
What this all comes down to is that the support I received and continue to receive as a Smith Family Scholar has helped bring me forwards so that, to return to the running race metaphor for a moment, when the gun went off, I was at least at the starting line rather than half a kilometre back down the track. Although, take my metaphor here with a grain of salt, I'm a visual artist, not an athlete. I suppose what I'm getting at is that opportunity is everything. The chance at a good and fair education is so important for breaking the cycle of intergenerational poverty. I am forever grateful to the Smith family and all of its donors for letting me live the life that's currently mine. Thank you for giving me these opportunities and for supporting me in my education. It is my honour to be here representing the Smith family and having a chance to speak about this support and these programs which have not only made such a difference in my life, but in the lives of so many other children in this country. Thank you.